Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I need my lighter. Oh. My lighter for the bomb fuse. You need a lighter and, you know, you need like one of those gas lighters and blow the fire into it and just burns the fuck out of your screen. You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> there goes monetization just like that. Ten <laughs> seconds in. Now, you know, Mission Impossible, it's like the bomb fuse going across the screen. It's like, bum, 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 What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to another emergency podcast. And it's an emergency. We have... um. Read really the title. No what's, what's the title of this? Tell everybody so, what's the title of this video. The title, you guys, of this video is CMS pre-final rule, right? So this is not the final rule emergency podcast. There probably will be another one, most likely, when it actually drops. But this is the pre-final rule. Will CMS bomb us or back off? We're gonna kind of talk about what we think. What we're what we're what we what we've heard, um, and just kind of different kind of speculations on kind of the different ways that this could go, right? And um, th there's a lot to talk about, Glenn. There's a lot there to is. talk about. There is a lot. There's the usual cluster of information of different sources, different people saying different things. There's some of you out there who are just rabid savages with pitchforks and you're and you're eating up the chaos and i kind of salute those people i really do um i'm, I'm sometimes i'm a part of that crowd obviously if if my company or my business is being cannibalized by these rule changes potentially it's hard for me to pick up the pitchfork and march with you guys but at the same time i think a lot of us would also agree that some changes need to be made so I think that's where things get a little sticky on all of this too, where it's like the majority consensus of us, if we talked about the state of the industry of what beneficiaries have to deal with, what being an agent, what you have to deal with versus an upline and their compensation, like I think we would all agree like some changes could be made that would be beneficial. Sure. The problem becomes what are those changes? How are those changes interpreted? How are they rolled out? who is actually enforcing these changes. Like that's where things get really sticky. But do you want to start? Sh should we start with worst case scenario? Should we just like three minutes in now, just like get into like these scary, like just rip the bandaid for anybody who's, who's watching. There are some agents who have no idea what's going on too. I'm seeing yeah. those comments. I'm seeing you guys. Some of you are like, what, like what's going on? Maybe we, maybe we first Chris quickly, address what's going on right so we're getting we're going to get flooded with questions i see you tony did they drop the final rule no um what <laughs> what, I, what i think what tony! i what i what 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 this is going to be about this stream today is it's going to be about what we feel like we're hearing um and what we feel like could potentially happen in different scenarios of the final rule i'm what i've been told from various different very credible sources i've spoken to over the past few days is it should be out by the end of the day tomorrow so we should have a final rule tomorrow for those of you that aren't familiar with what a final rule is the final rule is the government toying with your destiny <laughs> as a medicare agent right the final rule basically means dun, dun, how dun, can dun, dun. we fuck with you that's the government <laughs> saying that right so um and your business and so and your business and your business. And so final rule essentially is CMS putting out a rule change for those of you who may not know that will take effect upcoming, right? It, it could take effect in, in the case of last year, for example, right? It took effect October 1st for 48 hour scope of appointment rule returning and a various amount of other changes. Sometimes it takes effect the 1st of January, which is what we believe this one will probably be most likely. And the proposal, this, yes, that's a great point, Dan. You know, it's not a final rule. It's the final rule till they decide there's another final rule. You that's know? a great, it's, that's it's, a really great point. It's such a stupid name, final rule, you know, but, and it, but that's what final the Final rule does. 2025, slap a year on it. That's what the that's government all they does. Can do. 
Ultimately, guys, before I go into the details of this, I want to start off by saying I've spoken to a ton of people. I've got a lot of different takes and different information, some of which I, I trust credibility-wise but more than others. But at the end of the day, I don't know what this thing's going to look like entirely. I don't think anybody does. I've spoken to people right. that um, are at are, are as close to this thing as you possibly can be. I've spoken to people that are testifying in Washington about this over the past few months, and even they don't know exactly what's going to be uh, what's going to be right. So anybody that says they know what this is going to be, unless they are part of CMS, they don't know. Okay, so. Nobody knows for sure until this thing drops most likely tomorrow is what is what I've been told. So take this with a grain of salt. Now, what is the proposal, right? So this proposal came out this November last year, December. I'm trying to remember exactly. I want to say, I don't know. I get confused with the FCC stuff that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about the same time. It's it hard. It's hard to track all of these government changes and and which entity. It feels like somewhere between October first and December first last year that yeah. these proposed changes got rolled out. Because I remember thinking, like, why is this happening at the time that they're doing it? It seemed like right. they were almost trying to kind of sweep it under the rug. I would also say that. If you follow the news at all, or if like you have any history of following the news, typically bad news is set to get released on Fridays because it's the weekend. People are going out, they're busy with their lives. So hearing that this might drop tomorrow on a Friday to me, that's like, that's signaling bad news personally. That's a little thing, but that is just something that I feel like historically, like those mid late afternoon news bombs where they can say something horrible, drop some really bad information and, and people just don't, it doesn't get picked up. It doesn't have the same traction as, you know, Saturday through the rest of the week, Sunday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Did you think about that at all when you heard it was coming out on a Friday? Did that cross your mind? I didn't, but when we spoke, when we spoke about it and you mentioned that I, that it made a ton of sense to me and I hadn't thought about it pri previously, but I'm like, I, right. you know, that makes, that makes all the sense in the world to me. And I'm sure that that's, that has a lot to do with it. Um, it be. so let's kind of die. Let's kind of briefly cover what the proposal actually was. Let's do right? it. So the proposal was very long <laughs> for one, right? This thing was. I kind of lost track with how many pages it was, but it was. Wasn't the the new pages? update? I want to say the 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 section that wasn't just like regurgitated previous rules. The, the actual update itself, I thought, was around seventy eight pages, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that sounds right. I was yeah. in, my, in my mind, I was thinking eighty, so it's it's got to be. Yeah, it's probably seventy eight. Sounds really good. Um, seventy eight pages of so, brand new legislation <laughs> coming at, coming out from CMS. More or less, the intention of the proposal was to eliminate extra compensation on Medicare Advantage enrollments, therefore to prevent biases taking place when you're enrolling people into other plans. Now, the thing that's absolutely hilarious to me is anybody that knows about top of hierarchy levels, right? Like the, the levels of what the FMOs actually get top of hierarchy. Um and the top, you know, contracts that are available out there on these different Medicare Advantage companies, the, the ones that are paying the most are not the ones that are being enrolled into the most. So the fact that CMS is worried about this, that right there just should throw that theory out the window altogether, right? right. Because the carriers that are doing the most generous marketing dollars, the most generous co-op dollars in some cases, and the highest top of hierarchy levels are not the ones that are being enrolled into the most. If they were, our favorite insurance company that has completely outsourced um, customer service would be the number one carrier for the Medicare Advantage space. And I won't say their name, um, <laughs> but they're not, right? They're not even top three. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where that is the concern though. So what defines as extra compensation? Well, there's three things. One, overrides. Two, health risk assessment payments. And three, um, marketing dollars co-op yep um and essentially what makes the most sense with this and many people have said it before and 
Um, I want to take a moment before I go any further to kind of <laughs> shout out everybody that has been working on this on behalf of agents and, and FMOs, you know, and the, throughout the industry. Yes. Just, you know, shout out to Integrity Marketing and everything they've been doing. Shout out to um, NABIP and all the all the awesome people that have been fighting for us. Um, NABIP actually sent a very well worded letter uh, months ago to CMS, basically proposing that they do what's known as standardizing the top of hierarchy levels, right? So like, instead of it being 200, 300, 400, right, for top of hierarchy FMO levels, why not standardize it at 250 across the board? And right. that makes obviously the most sense, but, but, but again, guys, government, government doesn't want the thing that makes the most sense. They want the thing that makes the least sense, right? So, so I, I want to I defend CMS for a second. I, oh. I want to actually defend them. We might lose some people on the stream here, but <laughs> the Medicare, and, and I wanted to, so let's go, I want to go back to Cancer Kits 2018. Um, for those of you who've been in the industry long enough, you remember when the genetic cancer testing kits became this, it was like an overnight explosion where all of a sudden, all of these FMOs, IMOs, agencies, everyone was trying to get in on it where if if the senior would swab their cheek, mail it to a lab, and it got genetically tested for you know predispositions to certain types of cancers, they would get money for that person submitting the test. It became a huge issue with kickbacks, like specifically Medicare kickback laws where there were labs that were like faking these tests. There were all sorts of things going on. So like the idea that there is money that is being used as a Medicare kickback that violates the existing rules, that's happening all the time across the spectrum. There, so like I said earlier, like there is an issue with too much money at times going into the wrong hands for the wrong reasons. And, and I do think at some level with this, that was like the problem they were trying to address. At, on some level at CMS, they were trying to say, hey, let's make sure that the agent's getting paid, that you know, the policy is correct for the beneficiary, but you know, they're, they're trying to take like that fluff out of the middle. The problem though is, and this is what's been said over and over and over, does CMS understand the industry? Does CMS understand the business model of how this all actually works, the nuts and bolts on a day-to-day? -day? Because for a lot of us, especially those who are FMO owners or you own an agency, you know, if you've recruited agents, if you have a downline of any kind and, and you have had to support, and, and unfortunately there are some bad FMOs, bad IMOs out there who don't support their agents. But if you do support your agents, there's a cost associated with that. Christian and I spent an hour this morning talking about our cost supporting our agents and it's not cheap. And so, you know, when we're hearing about mm -hmm. these potential rule changes, yeah, that could affect us you know, because we're spending a lot of money supporting our downline agents. So if we're not making any money on a downline agent anymore, how can we justify spending money to support them? It, yeah. it messes up the whole business model. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I think we lost like half the audience when you said you're going to They're, they're, <laughs> they're the like, audience. nope, boom. Um, Leave the group. So, we're you done. know, I, I agree. I think, you know, the problem isn't necessarily the problem, right? No pun intended. I think it's, they have, they're not capable of really diagnosing what the solution could be. You know, I just, I, that, saw, that, I just saw the comment. I'm going to get a beer after that <laughs> comment. Who defends you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, but I think it's a valid point, right? Like the problem is yeah. clearly a problem. And I think, right. I think, I think the biggest thing, I think most agents, you know, probably feel this way, like that, CMS just doesn't let like you, you hit it right in the head, right? CMS doesn't understand our industry whatsoever. And right. CMS does not understand FMOs and they never really have, right. you know, and um, they don't understand the place of FMOs, what the FMOs do. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best to keep my tinfoil hat off for this stream because I have my own theories on kind of what long-term agenda is um, for CMS, but I'll keep it off of this stream. I'll do that in a, another YouTube video where you guys, you guys with your tinfoil hats can join me. But 
Um, <laughs> but but so let's let's kind of break this down, right? Like, so there's yeah. a couple different ways this could go. Um, again, if for those of you that are just joining, the final rule do, is not. Do you want to start? You want to start with worst case scenario and then work your way. The yes. Out. Okay. Let's, do, let's do that. Okay. So worst case scenario, right? Um, final rule drops tomorrow. Let's say. And that's what we're. That's what I've been told by a few different good sources. For those of you that are just joining us, so it's not out yet. Should be out tomorrow. Um, but let's just say FMO compensation gets cut by ninety percent. I think that's probably the worst case scenario. HRAs go away, marketing money gets slashed, um, which essentially cuts the throat of the FMO. Right? What? What if? If that's if that is. If that is what we see, what does our industry look like, Glenn? What do you what do you picture with that? Well, I, I keep thinking about these companies that have been built over really multiple decades now. And the structure of these companies is all about creating a downline, supporting the downline, and in return, they're earning an override right? So you have all of these massive companies, massive IMOs, FMOs. How do they, how do they meet their expenses? It, you know, when I'm talking about these massive companies, I'm talking about hundreds of stateside employees that are supporting downline agents. You're talking about a huge expense, even if they've done well, you know, managing their money and they can maybe eat that cost for a certain amount of time. From a business perspective, you, you know, when you're looking at the numbers and you're seeing, you know, this is your expense and all of a sudden the profit or expected profit is now this instead of this, and you're essentially losing money supporting an agent. How do you justify having a downline agent if you're losing money on that agent? You don't, right? Because you're either going to go bankrupt supporting agents and not earning an override, or you're going to terminate those agents, right? You're going to stop supporting those agents. Right. So, um, and, and it's not like Medicare Advantage is going away, right? It's not like it's thriving. Medicare Advantage, yeah, it's doing great. So it's like Medicare Advantage is going like this, supporting agents might be doing a nosedive like this and they'll have to stop supporting agents. You know, yeah. how, how, what else do you do? How else can you do it? At that point, like mo FMOs will be able to provide med sup contracting right they probably agents, still... so so someone just commented agents can go directly to carriers that's not true with all carriers there's some Ma carriers majority don't allow it a majority yeah. don't allow it um at least on the big carriers um yes. and so maybe that rule changes with a lot of these carriers maybe it becomes you know more normal for them to go direct and you still might my, my expectation would be I think you still would have FMOs contract agents, but the whole system would be tremendously different, right? Like what they're expected to provide goes down 90% with their 90% compensation slash if let's say that's the worst case scenario and that's what we see, right? So like, you know, you know, an FMO just moving heaven and earth for you, like some might do for an agent, it's not going to happen anymore. Right. They'll do the bare minimum to support you and it'll be more about, volume even more than it already is right. um and you know they'll still be able to con so, so they'll still be able to contract you for medicare advantage. it's just their incentive gets reduced significantly so they might focus more on aca they might focus more on med sup they might mo focus more on life final expense yep. uh, take your pick um ancillary products things like that and i just think this, the, the, the system now with Medicare Advantage, for those of you who don't know, is built on hierarchies, right? So you have multiple levels, this entire hierarchy built out for Medicare Advantage contracting. That might not be much of a thing anymore, you know? And, and I think another thing to kind of mention with this, for anybody that's new coming into the industry, if the overrides aren't there to sell the primary product that you're going to need to sell to survive these days with Medicare Advantage, it's going to be tremendously diff, diff, uh, difficult for new people to come into the business. You might see Sunfire, Connecture, CSG not be relatively offered as easily as they did were before for free. That might, that might change. Um, you might see 
less training, significantly less training, right? Like all of these things you get for the from your FMO now it, that you probably take for granted might take a bit of a nosedive and it just might make it. And you know, let's say marketing money gets slashed, like there's no support there. Right. Like it's one of those things where um, what we're seeing is it might just make it incredibly more difficult for a new person to come in and thrive and be successful. I think you're going to see probably the pathway to get into the business is going captive with a carrier or working in a call center or being an LOA somewhere. It's going to be the I, new barrier I to picture, entry. I picture an LOA call center boom. I think we've already been seeing it. I've been hearing rumors that the carriers are creating these call centers. I think the idea is paying an agent an hourly wage and just having them, you know, do all the work and, and give them as little support as possible. I mean, mm -hmm. I think what's what's going to be interesting too is the, the pitchfork crowd, right? The crowd that is like loving this, which I see you guys in the comments. I know you're out there. I know there's some of you that are like, burn it down, burn it down. And, and like <laughs> I said, I am on your team too. I'm on your team in the sense that I think change needs to happen for sure. Like there should be some type of change, but you know, be careful what you ask for, because if it gets burned down the way that it looks like it might get burned down, I think, I think it's, it's going to be a bit of a rug pull. I think you're going to have some agents be like, Whoa, wait a second. I'm not an FMO. Why am I not getting any marketing dollars? You know? Oh, wait a second. Why are all these benefits that I've been getting on a monthly basis, like quoting software training, you know, access to Medicare Center or Sunfire, like connection, like all of these different benefits might all of a sudden go out the window. And then you're like, you're like scratching your head. You're like, what happened? I'm not an FMO. The FMOs were supposed to lose their money. Why am I losing my money? It, we're all connected. It's an ecosystem. It's, it's literally just like a, a natural ecosystem, just like in nature. If you kill off, you know, a predator's food source, what's the predator going to eat? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's going to change the dynamic. It's going to change it significantly. And another yeah. thing I wanted to mention um, in the proposal, to, because of course, health assessments, I haven't even mentioned those yet, but the proposal was pretty clear that those would just be gone is my, how I read it. So yeah. to kind of combat some of this stuff, the proposal also said that it increased street level Medicare Advantage Commission to $31 a month. Um so there's that, I suppose. But, you know, I think for me, um, you know, what, what we're going to see is, again, it's just going to be the, the things that you guys take for granted now is going to probably change significantly if this happens in that way. You might even see some FMOs completely decide not to be in the Medicare space anymore. Right. Could see that. There so, so someone did ask, why do why do you think there's a need for a change? Because I mentioned that, that I thought there is a need for a change. I'll give you one of the, the main reasons why I think there should be a change is the idea that an IMO or FMO can get all the, the contracts for these insurance carriers and essentially hold an agent hostage without providing any support while at the same time potentially having a really big override. That's the system that I despise. I despise these IMOs and FMOs that mass contract agents, they hold their contracts hostage, refuse to give them a release, and at the same time provide very little to no support. That's the situation where I'm like, those people should lose their override. But the flip side is it, it, it's similar to like this bad apple situation where you have other entities. Again, Christian and I are spending a small fortune <laughs> every month supporting downline agents with training, with leads, with all sorts of different tools and, and software. Like there's all sorts of cost that goes into supporting our downline agents. And so it would be a huge staff, a huge effect to us. Yeah. Our staff, our payroll, like it'd be a huge effect to us because we invest in our agents, but the bad actors in the industry who aren't investing in their agents, who hold their agents hostage and they don't provide the value those are the people that I'm like, yeah, take their overrides. They're not giving anything to the agent. They're not supporting their agents at all. That's the type of change that I feel like we're all on the same page about. Like those people need to change. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I, I think it would be so nice if the carriers were the ones that were in, responsible for right. 
No, well, I, if they were the ones that were responsible for implementing necessary changes, because the carriers mm -hmm. have such a better understanding of our industry, and and what I mean, obviously they're they're not going to do that, right? Because they're all competing right. against each other and things like that. But in a perfect world, um, so that that's to me that's the worst case scenario, right? right. Let's talk about the best case scenario. Um, maybe things come out and there's just some changes, which I guess there's a chance of that. I don't really know. Um, I'm not hearing that. I don't think it's very likely right now, but, <laughs> but like maybe, maybe a page out of the Nabit book is the taken. Nabit. And, um, okay. and, and scenario there, two, Nabit scenario two comes the, to and, the rescue. Well, no, no, like not necessarily that, but their <laughs> suggestion of standardizing the top levels which makes sense if you ask me um, because then there's no biases, you know, and some right. kind of standardization on marketing money. I don't even know if that's possible. Maybe you just throw marketing money out, throw HRAs out, throw marketing money out and standardize the top of hierarchy overrides. To me, that largely solves the problem without kneecapping the FMOs. Um, it hurts them a little bit because of the marketing money and that kind of thing. But it, I don't think it's the, their death, their doom necessarily. Um, so in that scenario, I think there's really not a lot of changes. I think, you know, it's an adjustment, but not a ton of changes. I don't think it's incredibly disruptive. Um, again, what I, you know, what I've been told is some of the biggest, um, organizations in the industry have planned for a multitude of different, um, you know, scenarios and outcomes. have planned what they're going to do pivot wise and what their response will be and how they're going to handle each and every scenario. I also been told, you know, and I also, um, you know, have said that I, I've, I've, I've heard you hear this with most final rules, but that there's going to be a lot of pushback even after it passes to try to get it overturned or pushed back or something like that. Um, I know nobody wants to Doesn't talk it, about politics. Let's but, let's talk about that scenario for a second because this is what yeah. I can already this is what I kind of already feel is coming. Okay, I feel that we are going to get handed a live grenade tomorrow, and <laughs> we're going to be like, "Oh, what's this?" <sighs> it's just going to go off in our face, and then I think the narrative is going to be that an agent coalition slash nabip is going to get these rules changed, and I'm going to reference the call recording. Because when the call recording rule came out, everyone was like, this will never hold. Um, what was Nabit before it was Nabit? Na Nahu. Nahu. At the time, I think they were Nahu before Nabit. They were like, Nahu's going to get this ta taken out. There's no way we're recording all of our calls. You know, that's a violation of our rights. That's an extra cost that the agent has to incur. And the narrative became that these rules would change and don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden, AEP rolled around and, and none of the rules changed. The carriers just kind of enforced it differently based on the carriers and what rules they wanted to have in place. So be very careful because it's very hard to change the rules once they get implemented. I'm optimistic about the idea of changing the rules before they get published. But once these rules get, you know, final rule, once that gets published and it's done, the idea of going to court and trying to get them to throw out those rules to change them. Now you're pushing a boulder like straight uphill, you know, yeah. that, that, and I will say there's been a lot of positive noise from the agents and the IMOs, people who are going to be severely affected by these rule changes. I am seeing it. I'm hearing you guys too seeing the websites, I'm seeing the petitions, I'm seeing the outreach, I'm, I'm hearing the conversations, and that's awesome. And I, I want to help make a positive change as much as we can too. But at the end of the day, it really is going to come out, come down to, you know, what CMS wants. And then if CMS does something horrific, maybe we sue CMS. Maybe we sue CMS into the ground. I'm totally game. I'm on that team too. If, if it gets really ugly, they take everything. We want a rule change. That's when I think you have to lawyer up. Shout out to Galen Hendricks because I believe she has successfully sued CMS. The I not, don't think it was CMS. Oh, I think it was the was government. It? The Someone government. In, it wasn't CMS, but it was some government entity. And she when, won. She won. Right? It was, it was her in uh, Manhattan Life. Yeah. Yeah. And they won. Mama Medicare. Yeah. So I'm I'm getting behind Gay Lynn. You're gonna on this need her thing. to come. come you're gonna need her to come <laughs> to the rescue again. 
white horse. She's going to come in, just sue CMS into the ground. But no, that's that's the beautiful part of the legal system, right? It's like we do, there is a there is a path here. Like, let's say the rule change happens tomorrow. It's horrific. All these FMOs lose all of their revenue to support agents. It's chaos. Marketing dollars are gone. What do we do? What do we do? Yes, we could all sue CMS and see if we can, you know, tell them, hey, you're doing this illegally. This doesn't fit into your rules of what you're allowed to do. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I don't know if anything comes from that. That's kind of a gamble in and of itself, right? I mean, what? who's the judge? What does the judge think? I don't know, you know? Yeah, it's it'll definitely be interesting. One thing I wanted to talk about is, to pivot to a little bit and 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 we might lose the re- the rest of our viewership when i go here so i have a lot do... of questions i have a lot of questions too from people that i want to get into so let's yeah. not forget about that all right all right let me let me go into this before you we'll before you back. nuke the audience yeah. <laughs> let me quickly go into this and then we'll circle back yeah um, if you guys get pissed <laughs> off it. come back in like five minutes um close the stream come back in five minutes if I you're upset <laughs> i don't think Anybody ever wants to talk about politics, but I think we kind of have to in this regard. Absolutely agree. We, we have to. So I've I've done a couple of videos that have gone, you know, gotten gotten pretty popular with a lot of you guys about why is this happening, right? Like documenting the history of this will be the third final rule in this current presidential administration's term, right? For those of you who don't know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The commissioner of CMS is appointed by the president. It's an appointed position. It's not a government elected um, position. And so Biden administration comes in, old CMS commissioner comes out, another one's appointed, and, you know, Nazi Germany starts, right? That's pretty much what's going on. You're um, doing so good for a minute there. <laughs> it, but, right but, essentially, off the but essentially, that's that you know that's wh- where that's where this tightening is coming from. Now, you could make the argument that the previous commissioner might have been a little too loose with the rules. Maybe you could make that argument, right? Because we, we, what we were seeing was a lot of abusive rules, right, and not a lot of enforcement of rules. Um, we kind of had two different polar extremes in right. that regard. Um, but we have an election coming up. An election could change a lot of things. We could get a new CMS commissioner with the election, potentially. Um, and man, I mean, that could make a humongous impact, right? I'm not Good. telling you guys, you know, vote for this person, vote for that person. But like, you know, look at what's well, happened the last three years. Yeah. It has a profound effect. Who who the it has president a huge, is a huge impact. Yeah, that that's the really important part of what Christian's trying to say. <laughs> Nazis aside here, <laughs> it has it has a huge effect and impact <laughs> on the industry. Who the president is and who the CMS commissioner is. Right? Is it commissioner? Is that there? It's a commissioner. The CMS commissioner. commissioner. Who the commissioner is and the commissioner is really the one that is facilitating these rule changes. Right. They're, they're yeah. the ones that are signing off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm loving these comments. Yeah. Um, you said that's a great <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but like, be aware of that. Educate yourself. Right. Like, and be aware of that and understand that, like, nobody likes these presidential elections when it's everywhere, you know, and like we're in an election year. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely all over the place. It's going to be in your face everywhere you look. But it kind of affects us, kind of matters. Um, definitely. So just be aware of that. Um, all right, let's go into some questions. Let's get into some questions. So I asked some of you before we even started the live, if you had questions, there's been some questions in the live. If you're watching right now and you have a question, please, please, please don't hesitate to drop it below on the video. If you're watching the replay, let us know, hashtag team replay and still ask a question and we will circle back to this thread even after we're done streaming. But um, one of the first questions here that came up was how will our current contracts with carriers, how are they going to be affected if our FMO leaves? So, you know, again, Chris and I were just talking about this scenario, right? Where if you can't support an agent anymore because it's not a financial 
profit center for you, right? If you're losing money supporting a downline agent and you just decide to leave that part of the business or terminate your agent, you know, he's saying how, uh, this is Brandon, by the way, Brandon's saying, how is this going to affect us? For products like ACA that are paid to us from the FMO, how would that work as well? Well, I mean, like with, with ACA, there's no impact because this doesn't have anything to do with ACA. Right. Um, but he's that, saying, what if what if the FMO just closes up shop, though, overnight? And they're like, we're done. That's what he's wondering. So with ACA, you with a lot of the big carriers, they pay the F, the, the override or the commissions through the FMO. So right. me, in that scenario, it would just be as simple as moving FMOs to one that's not going out of business and your commissions yeah. will transfer. Um, it doesn't work that way with Medicare, but with ACA, it does. ACA is a little right. simpler. Um, you know, your commissions will move a lot of times, not with every carrier, but it just depends on the, you know, anyway, it just depends on the carrier. Um, right. but, um, let's say it's a Medicare situation, right? So it's, you're getting, let's say overrides, or there's some carrier that pays their commissions through the FMO. There's some regional carriers, small carriers that do that. Um, <laughs> excuse me, guys. I got allergies today. It's not good. Final rules and allergies. They go together. Uh, he's like, allergic. He's allergic, allergic to the final rule. That's what it is. I'm allergic to the final rule. Um, I would say, I imagine if it's commission that is paid through the FMO, it's totally like commission based. Technically speaking, your contract is an LOA contract. Technically speaking, it's the FMO's business, not yours, your right. LOA. So you're in that situation, if it's an actual commission, it's not override, your policies probably become house accounts. Sorry, I know that's not probably the most comforting answer. Yikes. Because um, <laughs> like, think about the it, right? The carrier is like, just taking that back. Yeah. If, if a call center, let's say there's a call center and there's an agent that works at a call center and they write 100 apps. And then the call center, let's say the call center explodes Right. There's like a gas leak or something, right? right? Like it's, it's, it's <laughs> gone. horrific. <laughs> and then no knock on wood to any call centers out there, but, um, they're how they're, they're not, they're, if you're LOA, it's the call center's business, right? So call center's gone. These policies become house accounts. Let's say there's a hundred Humana Medicare Advantage apps. There's a hundred Aetna Medicare Advantage apps. They be become house accounts. Unless how, there's how many kind of how many there. agents died? Yeah, how many agents died in the in the gas leak? That's what I'm trying to understand here. Over a hundred. <laughs> oh my gosh, this <laughs> is her horrific news. You guys thought final rule was bad. Wait till you hear Christian's nightmares coming out of his brain. <laughs> No, but that's, but again, factually, that makes sense, right? It would go back to the carrier. If there's no agent that serve or no, no downline, right? That services the policy, it goes back. Um, all right, that's no, if your next, FMO goes out of business. I'm not thinking, I'm not saying a lot of FMOs will go out of business. They'll probably find other ways to yeah. pivot. I, I agree. Let's, let's get to another question. Here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, this is a, a comment that's interesting because again, Christian and I were talking through a lot of this stuff today. Um, not that I like this idea, but the solution would probably be agents having to pay FMOs a monthly fee. So I think that is interesting. Um, I think this circles back to, you know, now you're now you're kind of shifting the cost of the override. That the, so these FMOs again, they were built. Because built on the override commission that they receive and that's how they can support agents. And so now that they need money to support agents, that expense is being passed down to the agent. So, you know, that could potentially be a negative situation for the average agent. Everyone's been, again, chalking this up as the average Joe agent. This is a huge win, but the reality is if you have to start paying out of pocket, for the same benefits you're receiving right now. I don't know how you can classify that as a win, but I do see that as a possible likelihood of what could happen, right? These yeah. FMOs are like, hey, I wanna keep you, I wanna support you, but you have to start paying 500 bucks a month, a thousand bucks a month, you know, whatever that number is, I don't know. 
it also could be where it's like, if you want us to continue to provide you everything we've been providing you, change your contracts to be LOA to us and we'll take 10% off the top. Yep. And they'll be like, that's your option. You know, it could be something like that um, if it's bad enough. Don't you think there will be a significant, again, reading some questions, guys, I don't have a name for this one, but don't you think there will be a significant consolidation of FMOs? I guess my concern is what happens when an FMO says they're done and it causes a lengthy issue with getting recontracted or paid. Um, we talked about that second part a second ago, like what happens if an FMO were to disappear? I don't, I don't think that's necessarily... We're losing Christian, you guys. His, brain, <laughs> his brain's going to explode. Um, it made my head hurt. <laughs> will there be a huge... I, that first part of it, though, is, is an interesting interesting piece of this because there probably will be, right? There will probably be some bigger entities that are like, we'll figure this out and we're just going to snap up all these people that don't want to do the business anymore. You yeah, know? it's possible. It's possible. I mean... Here's the other thing with this, right? Like we mentioned FMOs may be closing their doors because, you know. Peppermint for your thoughts, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Through the but, screen. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Like um, the thing is that 75% of the FMOs are owned by two companies. Right. right? And, they, and neither of these two companies are probably going to go out of business. It's going to take a lot. No. I would, you know what I mean? Like, so for the majority of you, you probably fall under one of these two entities, even if you don't know it, probably do. Um, so the likelihood of that being a thing for you is probably very small. But if, but let, like you asked about contracts, right? There's a couple different scenarios. I would say if let's say that did happen, they could release you on the way out as like a courtesy they could not, and you self-release. Um, or maybe the carriers do some kind of exception, you know, like a SEP of contracts or something they've never done in the history of contracts before. I don't know. Um, but you can always move with or without a release. Oh, so we're getting we're getting some live information from the audience yeah. here. I, I'm I'm gonna spot check this right now. It sounds like finalizes rule expanding access to care. Yeah, I don't think. Did you open it? Contract year 2025 Medicare Advantage in Part D final rule. Is this it? Yep. This is it. Is this it? Did we just get this live? Did I'm trying just, to open did, it. Hang on, guys. Did they hold, see? Hold on. Did hang on? Did CMS see us go live and they <laughs> wanted to drop? We said this was pre-final. The final rule appears to have just dropped. You guys, if you're watching this live right now, if you're with us, we've been speculating about final rule. The final rule has just dropped minutes, <laughs> minutes there ago. We go. it there we go. It's like oh, I'm nervous. I'm is nervous. This 1,327 pages. I couldn't let Christian beat them. It's a virus. Don't click it. No, it's real. It appears to be very real. It says April All 4th. Right. CMS.gov. Nice. How do we do this? Do you want to screen share? Do we read it here? What do you think? No, let's screen share. Yeah, they couldn't let me beat them. <laughs> They're like, nice. don't. Okay. Are you how nervous are you right now? I'm nervous to know. My heart's a little fast. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you have it. butterflies. I, I can't believe yeah. it dropped. It Whoa. dropped. We. I. I feel like we created this. I don't know. I was. We were told tomorrow. It got dropped today. Yeah, I was. I, I was we, told tomorrow by some very credible sources. Um, can you see my screen? I can. Here it is. So, how do you eat an elephant? This is 1,300 pages, you mm. guys. This is terrifying. We oh, willed this into existence, I guess. Hopefully, we willed something good into existence. Okay. Override. 
Requirements for resolution of complaints received at dinner. Nothing in our proposed policy override. Okay, that's not it. So, so that's the actual, I'm looking at the newsroom release, which I think is kind of like CMS's summarized version. Oh, where's that? Here, can um, you share? Here, let me, let me stop sharing. Can you share? Let me see if I can share this. I don't know if this is going to have all the info that we need, but we can sure try. Da, na, 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 na. Present share screen. The word FMO is in this 51 times. Fuck. Okay. Can you see my screen, sir? Not yet. Oh, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Now I can. Okay. Okay. CMS is cracking down on, let's see. However, excess compensation and other bonus arrangements offered by plans to agents and brokers can result in individuals being steered to some Medicare Advantage and Part D plans. Again, Christian talked about this earlier in the video. That was what they were trying to avoid with these changes is to stop people from steering, even though we didn't really feel like that's happening, especially for like true independent brokers. Uh, over others based on agents, brokers, or financial interests rather than CMS is cracking down on that. Specifically, CMS is finalizing requirements that redefine compensation to set a clear fixed amount that agents and brokers can be paid regardless of the plan that the individual enrolls in, addressing loopholes. In response to feedback from state, CMS is increasing the final national agent broker fixed compensation amount for a Medicare Advantage or a Part D plan by $100, which is an amount that was higher than what was proposed, which was $31. Right. Well, it was, it was, right. So CMS believes this increase will provide agents and brokers with sufficient funds. <laughs> Love that. Thank you, CMS. You Thanks, know what we guys. Need. You know what we need. Uh, this increase will be added to the agent and broker compensation payments for the annual election period in fall 2024. So let's let's start with just that piece of it. The $100 instead of $31. Is is that talking why does that sound like that's what's being paid today? It doesn't sound like that's I thought I thought that was supposed to be more about the override. Yeah, but the one thing they put in there was changing the um, compensation for agents to combat um, you're the MVP, Joe, by the way. Thank you for that. Yeah, um, Joe, you win. Joe's the winner, guys. No, no, the increasing um, agent compensation to combat HSAs and other things being cut. It was it was a combination of that and the the FMO compensation being cut. Eleven sixty. 1,000, okay, 1165. This is like live reaction. It's so dense, you guys. It's 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 hard to like, it's not like we're getting headlines here. You know, this is very densely worded, hundreds of pages of, of rule changes here. So we're I'm, I'm trying to get through this on camera live here to see if there's any bombshells that we can really kind of roll out right away. Limiting the distribution of personal beneficiary data. Some TPMOs have been selling or reselling personal beneficiary data, which can undermine existing rules that prohibit cold calling people with Medicare and result in other aggressive marketing tactics, tactics for Medicare Advantage and Part D plans. Individuals may be unaware that by placing a call or clicking on a generic looking web link, CMS is codifying the requirement that personal beneficiary data collected by a TPMO for marketing or enrolling in individual can only be shared with another TPMO when prior express written consent is given. This is kind of the FCC. They even reference it here. You'll see at the bottom, FCC regulation. So that kind of tracks with everything that, that we talked about before. 
because CMS was like trying to create these rules. And then I think the FCC stepped in and said, whoa, 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 we're the ones that handle that. So they basically just said that they're, they're referencing the FCC rule changes, which, which are coming up here, January, 2025. Can, can I read something from the other document yeah, real quick? Go ahead, please do. So, Joe, I went to that page that you suggested. So this seems like it's pretty good information. So um, at, this might take a second, guys. Hang on. I'll try to get through it quick. As explained, the section XCY of this final rule, as a, re as a result of comments, we replaced the line item approach to estimating costs with a holistic cost estimate. The, this holistic cost estimate was based on the wide range of estimates of current administrative costs provided by stakeholders in response to our solicitation of comments. It's basically when CMS was asking for data, that's what they're referencing. When they were asking for feedback, when they were pondering this for the last five months or whatever. Um, additionally, since the finalized $100 flat rate to be paid by plans directly to agents and brokers is less than the current administrative payments by plans, which are being eliminated. Okay. So it says that right there. Um, current administrative payments by plans, which are being eliminated. <laughs> we regard the costs associated with this provision as a transfer. That is a portion of the money currently being spent on administrative expenses is going towards the hundred dollar flat rate but is not an additional cost. The true costs of most administrative expenses can vary greatly from one agent or broker to another. Thanks, CMS. No shit. Um, and is based in data in contracts that CMS does not have access to. So it would be extremely difficult for us to accurately capture making a line item calculation not practical. This was further reflected in the wide variation among alternative rates posted by commenters. Um, with a few commenters suggesting an alternative rate increase of $50, another $75, while the majority recommended higher rates beginning at $100 and some going as high as $500. Some commenters suggested that we calculate the compensation increase as a percentage of the base rate, such as 30% or 33% of the current 611 compensation figure. So true up. Um, considering the complexities involved in balancing the in, um, incentives not only between MA organizations, agents, brokers, and other TPMOs, but also balancing incentives between MA and other parts of Medicare, such as traditional Medicare with PDP or Medicare supplement, we believe that choosing a flat rate for calculating the increase is an appropriate path forward. By taking a flat rate approach, we are also we are able to create parity among agents, regardless of which plan, plan type, or type of Medicare enrollment they um, do in behalf of the beneficiary. Given the fact that the administrative payments are intended to cover administrative costs that do not substantially differ based on which plan the beneficiary ultimately enrolls in. The flat rate is the best way to achieve our goals. So there's more, but I'll stop. So I'm not seeing any. So I, I while you were doing that, I kind of finished reading through the news newsroom release. I did not see anything in the newsroom summary that mentioned the override compensation that an FMO gets. So I, I'm curious to see. Um, I'm, I'm to, in order to try to speed through this, you know, the plan, you guys, for everybody who's still with us watching, the plan was to have a pre-release show. <laughs> we were going to talk about some theories, some ideas, get into some possibilities. And then tomorrow, when we thought this was going to drop, we were going to do kind of a recap emergency podcast, like go through the actual bomb that went off, figure out how big of a deal it was. Did things change? Is it the same? Well, it, the bomb went off live on air. You <laughs> saw it here. We literally were present when it went off. We're trying to figure out what happened. We're, we're going through the aftermath. I'm actually trying to use chat GPT right now to see if I can pull kind of a, a better summary um, out of this. Let me see. It, it looks like, 
Let's see. I'm reading you guys. It's a first. It's gotten <laughs> awfully quiet on the stream. This is the quietest stream. <laughs> yeah, seriously. The quietest stream. Guys, if you have um, anything that you've read, uh, we, the links are, are below in the stream as well. So if feel free to, to jump into the actual final rule PDF. It is massive. If you want to start reading right along with us, by all means, please do. Um, let's see. Let's see. Looking for section X, X. Give it to me. Andrea chat GPT. It's like, it's 1300 pages. That's the issue. Have chat GPT summarize it. Yeah. So, I have I have kind of a summarized list that ChatGPT just spit out to me, but it's it's almost in line with what the newsroom said. Um, it does say here the document clarifies that what was previously categorized as administrative payments or overrides paid to FMOs by Medicare Advantage carriers will now be included under the definition of compensation. This adjustment aims to redirect the flow of payments directly to the agents and brokers, enabling them to decide which services are essential to their worth. It doesn't really clarify things for me. I just got a little help. I'm driving. Otherwise, I would do it. Please oh, don't. <laughs> if you're driving watching this stream, Christian's facial expressions have me wondering. Someone... People, people aren't don't even want to know about the details. Everyone's trying to just read Christian's face at this point to figure out how bad this is or what is exactly going on. Okay, let's see. Okay, listen to this, Glenn. Okay, here we go. In addition, it appears that these higher dollar recommendations may reflect the agent or broker's loss of bonus payments and other purported administrative payments they may have previously received, some of which were always beyond the scope of an FMV of the services involved in enrolling beneficiaries into MA and PD plan, PDP plans, and therefore should not have been included under compensation or administrative payments. We believe that increasing the FMV rate for new enrollees by a total of $100 and therefore applied to renewals at a maximum amount of 50% of the total compensation amount should provide agents and brokers with sufficient funds to continue to access necessary administrative tools and training. So basically what I'm getting out of this so far okay. is... First take. Guys, gonna... first take. You're here live with Christian <laughs> Brindle. We're getting a first take minutes. Guys, minutes have passed since CMS <laughs> so, detonated this thing. Christian's uh, first on the scene. Let's, there's let's so get... much to get into. There's with this, a lot. Based on there's what so this much. is saying, makes it sound like they're increasing the compensation because listen to the words they use here. They say... This additional amount should provide agents and brokers with sufficient funds to continue to access necessary administrative tools and, and trainings to offset appointment fees and encourage the representation of multiple plans and therefore to continue providing adequate service to Medicare beneficiaries. So what that's making me think is, I mean, I haven't seen anything too specific, but I did read earlier that it mentioned word for word administrative payments being banned said that a couple you know pages back when i was reading before so it sounds like they are i mean we don't know all the details yet but they are cutting extra compensation and if you've been on the stream the extra compensation is overrides hsa's marketing money but paying the agent a higher base commission to so that the agent can pay for their own tools that the fmo provides that's not a great sign 
just so just in case you needed that. <laughs> I'm going to post in the thread here, you guys. So chat GPT, uh, I asked it to summarize. It tried to summarize it. It, it was a little too vague. That did I you, specific. Did it Go put ahead. the whole thing in there? Like I downloaded the PDF and then I uploaded the PDF to chat GPT. Brilliant. I know I'm a genius. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share on this thread, if I can get it pulled up on Facebook, these two paragraphs that, let's see. No, there we go. So I just, I just posted it as a comment. So what, what I'm seeing, it, it almost looks like what Christian just said. It, it's almost like a, um, it's like they're speaking out both sides of their mouth, I guess. Is, is that kind of what you're seeing? Because this first paragraph, it talks about agents, what you just said. Agents and brokers rely on the payment of administrative fees, also referred to as overrides from the MA organization to their FMO. These fees support services such as access to plan comparison, enrollment tools, training, contract, and compliance support. Commenters, that's you guys, you commented, Express concern that without such fees, FMOs might not be able to provide these extra services, potentially affecting agents and brokers' ability to effectively complete their enrollment tasks. But then the flip side is the other paragraph here where it talks about the removal of the category of administrative payments, i.e. overrides and how this change will affect the current flow of payments. Removal. That's a word. <laughs> that's, a word. that's a word if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Removal. I don't know. Someone says page, uh, I'm seeing a comment from someone. Page, five, page I'm, I'm, 594. I'm on page 592 right now, Jeff, so I'm, I'm getting there. Make you scroll down. I was like reading page 594. Let's see. Okay, here's page nine, 594. I mean, it sounds like, and again, this is, we're minutes in, just minutes <laughs> in. I'm trying to summarize over a thousand words <sighs> into, into, I'm trying to get to just the, the core of this for you guys. I'm trying to get to the answers. I, I want, yeah, purposely vague is what someone just said. Yes. Yeah. That's what drives me insane about this is it, there's probably going to be like a conflict in how some of this is worded. I'm already feeling that. That's kind of how it's been historically when these things happen. Um, but it, it does say removal of overrides and it, it talks about. I just can't get over that word <laughs> removal. <laughs> removal that okay, sounds incentives like are discussed on page 569 570 okay so here's five okay 594 we did not receive any comments on the proposal to extend these changes to the sale of pdp plans thus we are finalizing updates to some code and largely as proposed however in light of the change to the ma compensation rate described in section xc3 of the final rule and the need for parity between MA and PDP plans discussed in the section, we are conforming changes to PDP compensation rates um, to increase the PDP compensation rate for initial enrollments by $100. Likewise, where CMS is finalizing the regulation text in blah, 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 with minor organizational and editorial changes for clarity, we are adopting conforming changes to the regulation text that we are finalizing. Okay. Very vague. Extremely vague. Yeah. Hmm. 569, you said? 569 and 570. Oh, second to last bullet. Okay. Elimin okay, here we go. Summary of the final policy. We are finalizing the following policies with regard to the agent and broker compensation. For contract year 2025, the subsequent contract years generally prohibit contract terms between, I'm skipping that, set a single agent and broker compensation rate for all plans. Got it. 
eliminate the regulatory framework which currently allows for separate payments to agents or brokers for administrative fees applicable to contract year 2025 and subsequent contract years as reflected in some code. So a separate payment, is that talking about the override payment? Because it's, it's, it's the compensation is being split between the upline and the broker? The, the, the compensation, the administrative fees are defined as overrides, HSAs, and marketing dollars. So it could mean all of that, potentially. Okay, bottom of 11.02. Lots of words right, that don't. don't say much. Going to 11.02. Um, Eleven oh freaking two. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where even with reading the words that I've read, it, I, ultimately, you guys, and this is how this is what happens every time, right? If you're watching this live stream right now, if this is your first final roll, welcome to the club. I'm glad <sighs> you could be I'm glad you could be here with us. If this is your third final rule, um, or maybe you've been around even longer and you've seen some of these rule changes from years ago. Uh, sometimes even when they publish these documents, we have to wait really for a lawyer to offer some actual like legal clarification on what some of this stuff means. Um, I, it, some of this stuff seems kind of vaguely worded to me. I mean, is that kind of how you're feeling right now, Christian? Yeah, but I've seen in several places where they've referenced basically getting rid of Overrides. Um, administrative fees. Like, like that part of it has been pretty clear. Um, and, and that's what I'm reading it as, as of now. So the end, the bottom of page 1102, um, and they're basically, they're getting rid of all the, so th th this is very telling, right? This page, this part right here on 11, on the bottom of 1102, shout out to Joe. These increases of $100 per enrollment E for MA plan enrollment and up to $50 for renewals on MA and PDP plans are not costs, but rather transfers. The money that formulary was being paid for administrative fees is sufficient to cover these increases. While we do not have detailed quanti quanti quantitative information of, on payments, many commenters for both these, those who pay as well as those who receive, submitted overall quantitative payment recommendations for administrative payments. So basically it says this is not an increase. It's a transfer. So they're taking the revenue that was going to your FMO and paying it out to broker compensation. That's how I'm reading this. That's what that's, that's their whole like, big, big plan. So that there, there's going to be a $100 payment that, is above and beyond an agent's normal compensation. And CMS is saying that C note, that $100 per app we're giving you will offset any FMO support that you're getting. Is that yeah. what I'm reading? Yes. Like, and, so and overrides saying, are gone. There are no more overrides. Basically what it's saying is if you um, need Sunfire, Here's an extra hundred bucks an app. Go pay for it yourself. Fuck face. Wow. That's, that's how I'm reading this. I mean, I, when I, yeah, I see the words. What, what was the. Whew. Sunfire is going to go out of business if they don't lower the price. That's a great point, Scott. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point, Brian. The removal of the category of administrative payments, i.e. overall. This document discusses wow. the removal of the category of administrative payments, i.e. overrides. So overrides are gone and agents will now get $100 in addition to their normal comp. Interesting. Wild. So would you say this is worse worse than worst case scenario from what you had in your mind? I mean, we've barely dug into it. So there's so much, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I need to process and really dig into it more, but yeah, yeah, I would so far I'd say, yeah.
Um, bottom of 1151 through top of, okay, well, I'm, I'm going. Uh, so far, it looks worse. What page and, and today? Not, it's not often that it, it's worse than a proposal. Um, someone asked what page. So I don't know exactly. It, it, the wording came out of the document. It fe was fed to me from chat GPT. But it's that paragraph that I posted. If you scroll up, um, context of overrides. I believe that paragraph was, you know, again, fed to me through chat GPT came right out of the document. So yeah, I guess, I guess it, they're saying, you know, support yourself, right? Yep. Here's a, here's a hundred dollars an app. Go support yourself. You don't need an FMO. Yeah. You um, don't, you don't need support. Here's some extra money to support yourself. And if you don't know what to do, pay for training. Here's someone's comment. They're screwing my FMO, me, and my clients at the same time. Nice job, Uncle Sam. Yeah, that's that's about how this would, would play out. Um, who's going to contract the agents? That's what I'm trying to understand. So if overrides... Carriers are, direct, I guess. Good luck like with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good, luck. Good luck with that. Yeah, you want to talk about an increased expense. Do you know how much money it would cost these carriers to start working with all of these agents directly overnight? That's an insane expense. That's huge. This is wild. Not trying to, Jeremy. Looks like they just did it. it. Looks like the bullet came out of the gun live on camera today, you guys. Wow. You may have just <laughs> witnessed the death. You may have just witnessed the death of the field marketing organization independent marketing organization, FMO, IMO model for Medicare Advantage. It may have just died right in front of our eyes, right here on the live stream. We came on today. If you're just now tuning in, you guys, we came on today to speculate about these rule changes. We were told they're coming tomorrow. It appears they dropped just minutes ago, 20 minutes ago at this point. We have been trying to give you the gist of it thousand pages of information with these rule changes we're trying to figure out the key points to share someone wants to know are we going out of business glenn no that's the good news the good, that's <laughs> no! the good news we're not going out of business we're still here um it's definitely a kick in the nuts yeah for sure you know we like down, we have downline agents and, and both of them at once, by the way. It's a kick to both at the same time. For both sure. Ones. It is a kick to the nuts. It's it's painful, like we talked about earlier in the stream. Christian and I spend a lot of money supporting our downline. So if October 1st, which that's the way I read this too, by the way, it sounds like this is October 1st, not January that this starts. Top so, of 1152 would like our thoughts. Let me, let me, let me look. Keep feeding us, you guys. If you have questions, if there's spots in the document that you'd like to see discussed like this, this, this okay. is wild. This is wild. We're seeing the forest catch fire in front of our eyes. I will say we're the first Medicare agents to discuss this live <laughs> on camera. There's no way anyone beat us to this. No, it's no. not possible. We weren't even we, planning. We weren't even <laughs> planning for this. We crossed um, the finish line before the race started. That's how <laughs> fast we were on. The, don't forget, subscribe, you guys. Subscribe. That's how please, fast we are. Please, please. Subscribe. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna go bottom of page 1151 <laughs> into the top of 52. So comment. So they, they're reacting to comments of feedback that was provided on their 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 um you know feedback thing that they don't they didn't clearly read um comments several commenters provided comments on the agent broker compensation provision they noted one lack of any cost analysis two the possible adverse impact this would have on independent agent slash brokers or small agencies the high vo uh, volatility and variance of several line items contributing administrative costs and expenses to agent broker compensation may be inconsistent with the uniform plat, flat compensation rate. Okay, I get it. I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'm going to skip. Um, the comments were both 
um, qualitative and quantitative. In particular, several commenters said that administrative costs were sufficiently higher than what we said, the NPRM. These qualitative costs range from $50 to $500 per enrollee. <laughs> Excuse me. With many commenters targeting the higher amounts. Response. So CMS, I guess this is CMS's response. Our finalized provisions simultaneously eliminate administrative payments, but provide for higher compensation per enrollee. Yeah, it's right there. That's right there. The increased compensation above the baseline compensation rate is $100 for each new MA or PDP enrollee. As discussed in Section XX of the pre, uh, preamble and Section XC10 of the Coalition of Information, section. Our goals were to one, provide sufficient funding, which would compensate agents, brokers, and related entities for their work, except for FMOs, two, not to give um, excesses, and three, to is select increases consistent with current payments that is not exceeding current administrative payments. In other words, the finalized provision transfers funds currently being allocated to administrative and compensation in the transparent and uniform manner. We have cons uh, consequently scored this impact as having no cost and therefore do not believe this will have any adverse effect either to <laughs> TPMOs, FMOs, or independent <laughs> agents. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. To me, it won't affect you. They said it won't affect you. Don't it worry about your money. Don't it worry about your compensation changing. It CMS said, it said it's not going to affect you. You're fine. It, it said it won't affect FMOs, but you're getting rid of you're getting well, rid so, of overrides, and it's not going to impact uh, the FMOs. Listen, apparently. so so depending on the spread between the average Joe agent and a national, you know, like a, a massive IMO. What what is the average? What is that? Two fifty? Like what? What is the the administrative spread or the override spread that was on the table before? Two hundred? Two fifty? Probably uh, it's a spectrum anywhere between two hundred to three hundred was the top of hierarchy. So they are taking a two to three hundred dollar administrative payment. They're cutting it to a hundred, <laughs> and they're giving that one hundred to the agent who wrote the app. So who's who's really winning? The insurance car the insurance carrier just got their their overall expenses that for administrative costs just got cut by fifty to sixty seven percent fifty to seventy percent of the administrative costs that the carrier was having to foot for the well, commissions. Well, here's the other thing though, right? Like if the FMOs moved out of the way, let's say the carrier has to do everything the FMO is doing, like compliance Correct. upkeep contracting yeah. so they they're, they're my, i mean i'm wondering if there's something in there that mentions the carriers need that extra money to do that stuff i don't know i've gotten to that but the contracting of agents that's that's i mean we have a whole department have. for it guys right it's such dedicated a, staff it's a really big deal if you're an fmo and you're not getting paid to contract this agent, why would you contract it? And if, the, if you're not going to contract that agent to sell MA, who is going to contract it? Because like we talked about earlier in the stream, most of these carriers, the last thing they want to do is contract any of you. Most of these carriers despise you. They don't want to talk to you. The, the IMO model was created to give the carriers protection from you. <laughs> That's the whole point of the business model. So CMS is coming in and they're rug pulling the compensation to the FMO completely. It's gone, according Rand to what we've read. Randy, it's possible that that's it. Randy said they may be talking about getting rid of HRAs and marketing money, but FMOs may still be in place. But I don't know, right? Because like saying overrides, they said they administrative the payments. That is override. I.E. overrides. I.E. overrides. So, That's what they said. So I mean, well, I got to dig through this more, I guess. Um, and ultimately, here's the other thing: the carriers have to go through this and interpret it. 
We probably got another three months for that. Maybe more. It's going to be a wild 90 days for sure. Leading up to AEP. Again, I mentioned this before we found out what the rule change was. <laughs> trying to get the rules changed once they're published is a lot harder than trying to get the rules changed before they're published. Now that these words are on paper and they have published them, getting them changed is going to be a whole different ball game. I am so interested to see how this is all going to play out. You know, this someone asked if Christian and I were going out of business. Here's the brilliant part, you guys, of Christian and I working together and merging our, all of our companies together at the start of the year. We both saw kind of the writing on the wall between the FCC and CMS, some of these rule changes. We wanted to come together so we could create a solution, regardless of what the rule changes turn out to be, that could still help support you guys as agents. That was our, our number one goal. Um, with these rule changes being as radical as they possibly are, I think we're in a position to potentially help support agents better than ever, regardless of being an FMO or being an upline. I think we're in a position where we can still really help support you guys. Will there be a financial cost that as an agent, you might have to, uh, you know, <coughs> essentially, essentially the money that your FMO is paying for your support, you know, CMS is saying that that's on you now as an agent. That's on you. You have to pay for your own support. So, you know, obviously a paid support model seems to kind of be the route that CMS is, is wanting people to go. So, you know, the beauty is Christian and I are, are ready to fill in the gaps where we will take your tired, your poor, your hungry. We will take <laughs> you guys in and we will support you. We will find a way to support you that makes business sense for us and business sense for you, right? We want it to be equitable. We don't want something that's, you know, going to keep that would make us go bankrupt or keep you from being profitable. Like it, there will have to be a give and take here, but I, I'm optimistic and Christian and I, we talked about this today before this dropped, before we got on the live, we are super optimistic about the future and helping kind of create a solution regardless of how these rule changes play out. So yeah. I wanted to say that because I was a little doom and gloom this morning. I felt really good after Christian and I talked and I want, I, I want to offer some hopefully, you know, clarity and, and maybe some optimism for you guys. If you're watching this stream and you're, and you're not about to go jump off your roof, we're going to figure this out. Okay. It's going to, it's, it, there's going to be a pathway forward for sure. It's um. so here's what I would say, guys. I'm going to be spending time over the next few nights. There's a hundred people on this live, by the way, like there's a ton of interest in this. I'm Part going two. to be going through this over the next couple days and trying to, um, you know, just decipher and see if there's anything that I've missed. And of course, here's the thing. This thing is vague. It's so vague. Some the of the carriers vague. have to interpret it, right? Like, this is far from over. This is far from over. It is far and, from over. And, you know, in terms of what we're doing, right? Like, as Glenn said, like, we are going to find ways, no matter what happens, to provide support and value to agents, right? We're going to find a way. Um, what that looks like, we can't say right now because I don't feel like we have all the we don't have all the information yet, right? This is going to take some while to digest and see what the reaction is going to be. And also, you know, just different interpretations, but, um, yeah, I mean, as of right now, that's all I got for you guys. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, there's a lot. I don't know right now. There's a lot of unknown, a lot of unknown, and, a lot that can change. The carriers are going to have their own interpretation that they'll, come out at some point and explain what their thoughts are. NABIP apparently is already involved. We were hearing this morning that NABIP was threatening to sue CMS. Did this just trigger a lawsuit? Maybe, I don't know. Um, Chris and I also have a pretty large network between the two of us, um, compliance officers, FMO owners, um, people who work at AmeriLife, Integrity, people who have been in the industry for decades. Like we have a large network of individuals that 
we can talk to both publicly and privately about this. So, you know, what I, I think would be best here, I feel like we got first take. I feel like first take is is kind of here in, in the stream. You can watch the replay as soon as we're done. Um, once we get more information, once we are able to talk to those people in our network, talk to the compliance officers, the FMOs, you know, I, I would love to talk to NABIP and hear more about what's going on on that side to try to fight this. And, and try to, again, I, my goal here, and I know Christian's goal here, like we want to offer clarity to you guys. We want you guys to understand what's going on and, and hopefully be able to offer a pathway forward as well. So um, part two will be coming soon to this mm -hmm. stream. Real quick, I want to read yes. this this part that Jamie Please do. posted. Please do. Because I think this was very interesting. I'm just quickly yeah. reading it. While MA organizations that are engaged in these types of arrangements, such as FPAIN, FMOs for lead generating activities and marketing then gives the leads to the FMOs agents and then paying compensation for the same enrollment might argue that they are not intending to influence an agent or broker in determining which plan best meets the best healthcare needs of a beneficiary. We believe it is likely that these arrangements are having this effect. Man, my freaking allergies, guys. We believe that current contracts in place between FMOs and MA organizations can trickle down to influence agents and brokers in enrolling more beneficiaries into these plans that are also provide the agent and broker with leads, regardless of the appropriateness of the plan for the individual enrollments. In fact, FMOs could leverage these leads as a form of additional compensation by rewarding agents who enroll beneficiaries into a specific plan with additional leads. Therefore, CMS un is required under section 1851, blah, 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 of the act to establish guidelines that will bring the incentives for agents and brokers to enroll individuals in an MA plan that is intended to meet the best healthcare needs in accordance with the statute and as such in CMS intention here. Vague. That's the thing. Vague. Super vague. What does that um, mean? I don't know. I don't know. I do want to mention here I, while we're on the stream really fast to you guys. If you don't already have a ticket to the summit, we will be in Savannah, the time. Georgia. Now's the <laughs> time. Will, this is the time. You need to be around like-minded individuals who are going to be figuring this out together one way or another. I just tagged the seven-figure Medicare agent summit in my comment. Um, Randy is a member of our team. He'll share a link to the site here momentarily. But if you don't already have your ticket to go to the seven figure Medicare agent summit in June, please, 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 please let this be the thing that gets you to the summit. Let this get your butt off the couch and get you to the summit so you can figure out exactly how this will all play out. The benefit of the summit compared to a lot of these other conferences, guess what? If you're going to a conference next week or in the next couple of weeks, they're not going to have the same type of intel that we will have by the time June rolls around. By the time June rolls around, we will have a very good understanding of this final rule and oh, the yeah. best pathway forward. Yep. Yep. I mean, the summit's going to be insane, guys. So Wild. I don't know if you guys, I have not said this on anything yet, but I'm, but I'm going to be the MC. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to kick this, and I'm going to kick this thing off. I might just have to do 30 minutes on this Whoa. day one of the summit. Just might have to do. I thought CMS was the one dropping bombs, and here <laughs> you are. You come in at the end and just drop a bomb, guys. Savannah, Georgia, June 7th and 8th. Be there or be, there. be square. Check or out that link. Where you guys? Yes. Um, yeah, guys. Um, Appreciate you guys being on. I, I hate to get off with, with all this interest. I really do, but we're in an hour and a half. Glad's got a family. <laughs> I, um, I think I still do. I don't know. I have a family, although I probably I mean, neglect. I, I would I have stay a family on. that I neglect. <laughs> I would stay on for another couple hours. I just hate this, like, people watching us just read. Like, I need time to digest. I need to read privately, digest this. I need to have some conversations off camera. I love that we were first to break this. This is Christian and I were the first Medicare agents to break this story. You heard it right here in Seven Figure Medicare Agent. 
There's not a single other group out there that beat us to it because we broke it here live. We will be back with a part two and just stay tuned. Keep your eye on the group. More information will be coming out. Um, and like I said, there will be a pathway forward no matter what. Stay optimistic. Get your ass to the summit, Seven Figure yep. Medicare Agent Summit in June. There will be so much information there that will change your life. I, I completely, I just, I can't, I can't stress it enough with everything that's going on right now. The summit will be the place <coughs> that you're going to want to be for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, guys, I have a lot of reading to do. Um, <laughs> You got homework. <laughs> and uh yeah, guys, don't um don't lose hope. It's gonna there is a pathway. Hope. We will survive. You will survive. We will survive. Hey. Um, and um will yeah, guys, watch the group. I'll be posting thoughts. We probably might even do a follow-up um emergency podcast when I'm yeah, not maybe tomorrow definitely. or maybe Monday. We'll see. We'll see how this all pans out. Yep. There will be a follow-up here soon. Uh, if you're trying to use ChatGPT, download the PDF and then re-upload the PDF to ChatGPT. That's the best <coughs> way to do it. But that's it. That's final thoughts, you guys. Again, I appreciate everyone that's been on the stream today. We will keep you updated. Stay tuned. And until next time, happy selling. Get out there. Sell insurance in large volume. Large volume.